Pallies Podcast. Kyle here with Pierre and Jeremiah. We're talking about the Craven trailer, the first episode of Secret Invasion, and Pierre's deep dive into Shazam! Fury of the Gods. His full review oh, and why he gave it a 9.5 out of 10. We're getting deep. Is that a real 9.5 out of 10? You have to wait to the end of the episode to find out, <laughs> Jeremiah. Just Stay like tuned everyone else. after our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Pierre, why don't you just do whatever you wrote in my notes here? Whatever your rumors are, let's go into that first. I'd like to call it news, you know? I mean, I guess it is kind of rumors because it's not confirmed, but... Biggest thing that everyone's excited about, El Muerto. That's right. You didn't expect me to start with El Muerto, but El Muerto is still apparently in production. Well, not in production, but in the works. Ow. That's got to be a fake name for something. There's no way that a G-list villain is getting a movie. I think Bad Bunny is going to be something else. I don't know what yet, but start thinking. And try not to be racist. It's going to be something Latin, for sure. <laughs> it's 100% going to be that. I just don't know what they're going to do. I think it is going to be Spider-Man related. I just don't know, yeah, what hero or villain he could be. Well, it's got to be Spider-Man related, right? Because Sony doesn't own yeah. anything else at this point. Yeah, I see them giving him a villain movie. I just don't necessarily see it being a Marto. Like, why? You know, unless it's like a James Gunn type of situation where you put a super character no one's heard about and give him life and now everyone's in love. What if he is Spider-Man 2099 live action? I was thinking that in my head. But he's not. What I was just thinking was Morlin, but maybe Sony wants to avoid vampires. Morbius. But him being Morlin would be really cool. I believe there is a version of Morlin where he was Hispanic. I could be wrong there, but yeah, it'd be cool for him to be Morlin. Now, that's actually kind of funny. That would be a play on words. El Muerto being the dead one yeah. vampire. Or a little stupid and not realizing that it actually means more. Just kind of like the, what's his name's movie coming out? The Hypno Hustler movie that we're all excited to see. Yes, it's clearly something else. Deadpool 3 will have multiverse variations of Wolverine and Deadpool. So that is the latest rumor amongst everything else. I think that's cool. Danny DeVito Wolverine. Danny DeVito Wolverine. Danny DeVito Wolverine. <laughs> Lady Deadpool first appearances. That's a given, X23. right? 23 Is it going to be Blake Lively? That'd be funny. That'd be dope. Yeah. Wow. Might have to get it. Deadhead. Dead Squirrel. Dead Kid. But like anyone that would like care that the first appearance would go up in price. I think they all appear together. Deadpool core. Number one. Oh, uh, okay. We're probably going to get Deadhead. Lady Deadpool's a guarantee Deadhead is probably the next closest. What if we got a Gwenpool? Fuck you. I would love Headpool because that would actually be a way to segue into Marvel Zombies. Yeah, that's the mm. reason why Headpool is most likely the next guarantee after Lady Deadpool. That would be our live action Marvel Zombies. That would be cool. Next on the news, Into the Spider-Verse Part 2 will explore Prowler's universe and also Spider-Punk's universe. Kind of thought that was going to happen. To be honest, I'm not really surprised by that. The Prowler's universe thing, I think it's going to open up with. I think it's going to be one of those Miles Morales introducing himself. Like right? with Gwen did in this movie and so on and so mm, forth. Yeah. Next on the agenda, the biggest thing that we have, Craven trailer. Is that the biggest thing? No, nah, Secret Invasion, I think, is bigger than Craven trailer. But I'd love to talk about the Craven trailer. So let's do my favorite game. Let's rate the movie off of a trailer. What do we think this movie is going to be? Seven. What did Morbius get? Three. I'll give this a four. Like, I think it's going to be better than Morbius. I'll say a five. I yeah. think Aaron, I think he's going to be a good Craven. I think Russell Crowe always plays a convincing bad guy. I'm really curious if that's Chameleon sitting next to him in the limo. Hmm. If we're going to get a Chameleon cameo. Okay. Because Chameleon and Craven are brothers. That's sometimes kiss. That sometimes kiss, I guess. Amazing Spider-Man number 122 for the reference, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 122 is the death of Green Goblin. But I saw the Red Band trailer. The Red Band trailer is great. Lots of blood, lots of violence. There's a bear trap that hits a guy. And I know in the regular trailer, the bear oh, trap yeah. hits the guy and it just cuts. This one, the bear trap hits the guy and he pulls him down and part of his head comes off. So hmm. I think it looks good. So do we feel that the violence can carry it to being a successful movie? Because I think the plot's already trash, because let's face it, blood from the lion giving him superpowers is not quite what I wanted to see, and I'm hoping it wasn't that obvious, you know? Unless the lion is, like, infected with something, it kind of felt weird that it was just one droplet of lion blood that gave yeah. him his full craven powers. 
I don't know why they had to change it. Actually, I don't know why I'm trying to sit here and defend it. Craven's power set and where did it come from? If I can remember correctly, no, I think he just has superhuman strength from training so hard. I think he has superhuman senses from like depriving himself and learning from animals. I don't believe there is a mystical thought behind him to my knowledge it's been a long time since i read the first appearances of craven which is amazing spider-man and also craven's last hunt never mentions anything about his mystical powers if he has any mystical powers so i think this route of going by giving him powers from the animal is the best way to explain it because when you tell people hey we're gonna go see a superhero villain movie Mm. if you don't have that moment it won't drive the point home for mm-hmm. those non-initiated. You know how I'm like, oh, like the Venom movie felt like it came out in 2003? Yeah. Like, oh, Morbius felt like it came out in 2001. <laughs> this trailer was also like 2007? Based on some of the scenes, also confirmed that it's not Andrew Garfield universe because of the Rhino teaser, because it wasn't Paul Giamatti, unless they're going with like the second Rhino, because Paul Giamatti's behind bars and whatnot. So... That's like concrete adjacent that it's not Andrew Garfield's universe. With the spiders at the end of the trailer or whatever, I think that's more of a Venom tie-in than a Spider-Man tie-in. Okay, but that Venom doesn't have any spider yet. No, but if you looked at the webs, they weren't white. Oh. They were all black. The black spiders and black webs. Okay, a little bit of a stretch, but I'll take it. Okay. Maybe that's the only animal Craven is afraid of, and Eddie figures it out and drops tendrils of spiders. Do you think Venom will show up in this? Yes, for sure. The rhino thing, I think it's very possible that it could still be Andrew Garfield's world, and that it's just a second rhino. You know, whereas there were two rhinos before, there was a rhino that was a nerd that got robot armor and became the rhino based off of that. And then there's the rhino that transformed, right? Like this. Yeah, there was a rhino in the comics that did this. Like that actually transformed. And the other one was just like a big rhino that had like a rhino suit. You know what it could be? That would make it Andrew Garfield's universe. What if this is all stemming from like the lizards research? That's why I think it is Andrew Garfield's universe because everything is based on animal gene splicing, all right. that stuff. So it's very possible. And I think that Craven may actually end up using something to enhance his powers later on. Do we remember Far Cry video games? But like yes. the original ones? Yes. Where like you went primal. Craven's running around on all fours. That's what I thought of. Not in a good way. That could be a good way. He's going to get more primal. I think that's how it's going to develop throughout the movie. But then it's just like Morbius, where Morbius loses control. Right. Just like the Hulk and like Venom. I think you're right, though. I think Venom will be involved in this. And I think Andrew Garfield and Venom will have some sort of fight at some point. I think we'll get a Spider-Man cameo in this as well. Or just like on the wall or something on a TV. Like swinging by. Yeah. To counter all of that, I would argue that Andrew Garfield as an actor might be bigger than the Sony-verse right now. Yes. Like he's done definitely. some projects that we wouldn't necessarily care about and been very close to like winning some awards and whatnot. Being Spider-Man again in a uh, 6 out of 10 average universe, he might just be like, no thanks. I'll keep what I had. Yeah, Sony's not really setting up their best universe, but the Miles movie gives it hope. I think we're going to get to a point where Marvel has their own set of Miles and whatever going on, and they have a Venom already, then they're just going to be two separate universes, and Marvel's just going to do better. It's pretty bad. Marvel has their competition within DC, and then they're like mutant stepbrother. (laughs) (laughs) Sony. Yeah, I think Sony should just... Stick to, like, the animated movies, because they're doing great with that. Give all the rights back. And DC was doing a great job with that, too, with the animated movies, you know? Comparing to Marvel movies and Marvel shows. Oh, Marvel animated? They're way better. DC is way better than Marvel. DC should maybe stick in their animated (laughs) box. They should just stick in their animated box, and Marvel do their real-life box. It's just, we're not all good at everything, you know? That's right. Yeah, we're all not Pierre. That's it. (laughs) Before we move to there, Pierre, you'd make a great Craven. That's all I'm saying. I did see that. I don't understand (laughs) why this is happening to me. Let me explain myself because I know it's weird and it's weirder that like I did it in my boxers at like midnight. So I had this idea because you had a recent picture with you with a giraffe Mm -hmm. and I was going to just like throw Craven into that picture, like just like real small in the background. And then it just spiraled into you being, yeah. and then me searching for more Cravens. I don't know why I started putting sunglasses on you. Probably easier to edit that way. Yeah, I, I guess like just to make the face look a little, you know, 
less more menacing. So yeah, so you are Craven, the fan poster that I altered. The original artist, even he liked it. He thought it was cool. Pierre, when Sony calls, answer. Hopefully it doesn't come in as a spam call. You could be his other brother. I could be the Marvel Universe Craven. Let's go to Secret Invasion Episode 1. Let's give it a rating and then let's get right into the intro because that has some controversy. Yeah, 7 out of 10. I think I'd do the same. 7 out of 10. I definitely can't sit here and give it a 10 out of 10. 7 out of 10. 10 is fair like well done am i excited not per se but 7 out of 10 is fair i think there's nothing wrong with it really so you know how marvel said that they were going to start dropping shows with echo being the first one where they're going to drop a show all in one shot i think this should have been one of those shows that's really funny because i almost made a note saying the same shit my thought was this episode didn't feel like a pilot it felt like a we know the story and this is like a filler episode. It felt like a filler. A little bit. So let's say spoilers before we get there. But there will be some spoilers, especially the ending. But I do want to talk a little trash about the intro. I know everyone else is doing it. It blatantly was AI. Yes. But what makes it slightly better? Method Studios is the one who made the intro. Method Studios worked on like Miss Marvel and a bunch of other projects. So they are a company that works on graphics for Marvel. Why did they hire Method Studios, who is very talented, to do an AI version? I have one theory. I don't know if I want to quite say it, but this wasn't the place to use AI. If they had an Ultron show, that's something. But this wasn't the place to do AI. It looked like shit, because most AI does. And you have a talented student, and you make them do some dumb shit. So I'm not pleased with it. I think doing AI is setting back a lot of people. The mm. fact that they're using a property that was built on the back of many artists to not use an actual artist. I mean, you use the company, sure, right. but to not use real people is a slap in the face to them. So that's why I'm upset. I don't think it's fair. I think it's very douchey. I wanted to look for a better mm. word, but I couldn't find one. But yeah, just very douchey of Disney to do this. But like, did they get a discount? You know, what was the purpose? Because again, it didn't fit with the story. Literally anyone sense. could make that with AI. Yeah. With zero artistic ability. Now, did they put in the prompts to get exactly what they needed and put it all together and probably do some kind of effects to make it all like swirl and shit? Yeah, sure. Just a very odd choice. And Pierre, I think you were about to say how much you liked it. I'm actually surprised. I thought it was actually pretty nice. It was cool. Take away the AI thing from it. I just thought it was a cool intro compared to the other intros that we got. And I thought it was creative. Again, I didn't know it was AI at that point. You just thought it was like overly abstract. For a show about shape-shifting scrolls, watching the faces, how they were shape-shifting, I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, and obviously the green being that they're green. It made sense. And once I found out it's AI, didn't care. I think the studio doing it themselves makes it a little better. I don't know if it's worth talking shit per se. It's more so like, why? In my brain, the studio doing it, means that they didn't kick a puppy they kicked an elderly dog right. it's not as bad <laughs> but it's still not great i think if it was something related to ultron it would have been super fitting and it would have been like nice touch even if they just use the ai to get the idea for it all and then had another artist come in and render on top of it same sequence but the scroll faces looked like fucking scroll faces. Mm -hmm. Nick Fury looked like fucking Samuel L. Jackson. And you had the Starry Night esque swirling of the images but another artist came in and rendered on top of it, I would be less upset. In the future, that's what I feel AI should just be, is a springboard, a prompter. Yeah. It should not be the final product. I secretly think this was on purpose. Because the show had a lackluster pilot episode, I kind of feel like maybe they went with this because they know it's a hot topic right now and there's controversy of... It's going to get people talking. Yeah, I think it's just a talking point because no press is bad press, right? Something along those lines. Again, somewhere else would have been awesome. It would have made sense. Not with a scroll show. But yeah, so let's go right into the scrolls and when they run around their little village and how they kind of look a little goofy to me well you run around with all those prosthetics on your face and see how well you do yeah they did kind of look a little goofy and i think that was part of the intention because even when okay. you go back into captain marvel when <laughs> she saves them all and they all come out to play fucking pinball they all kind mm. of ran around that little goofy way so 
I guess I was just wanting a more serious tone. I think we got it. I think they definitely did a serious tone, though, like towards the end, too. That ending, yeah. I wasn't expecting that at all. And again, spoilers, just yeah. wow. What are your guys' thoughts on Sword being called Saber? So it's the same response to the spoiler ending, right? Why did they kill Hill in the first episode? Why did they change the name to Saber? I don't get the choice. I'm not against it if it's good for the story for some reason, but I'm not sure why. So they changed it from Sword to Saber. Yeah, because the spaceship in Circling Earth that Angela Brand controlled and that was a big part of the Secret Invasion storyline is called Sword. And in the show, they kept referring to it as Saber, which I mean, same thing, kind of, but... No, but why? Doesn't sound nearly as badass. Saber sounds preppy. It just made sense with S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Question for you, Jeremiah. Do we ever see Saber in the comics? To my knowledge, no. But I'm not completely caught up. Maybe they renamed Sword in the comics to Saber recently, but not to my knowledge. To my knowledge, Sword is still Sword. And I think it was last mentioned in X-Men because of Krakoa, but I'm not 100% sure. So, Maria Hill... Why is she dead so quickly? I don't understand. Because they can't afford Colby Smulders. And if we're going back to spoilers at the very beginning of the episode, we got Martin Freeman's character was being portrayed by a scroll and was killed. Both dead. Quote unquote dead. Agent Ross mm -hmm. was a scroll, faded to black, so we don't know if Maria Hill's fully a scroll. Maybe she is, then we won't have to worry about this, but it looked mm -hmm. like it was actually Maria Hill. That throws so many wrenches into the plans, but it also makes sense with this show because they can't afford everyone. Samuel Jackson and all this prosthetic and CG that they're going to have to do. Emily Clark, I'm sure, demands a high premium for her to be no. in the show. It makes sense in terms of the show budget wise. It doesn't make sense in terms of story wise. Maria is a very important person. We've been with her since phase one. She's one of the few people who has appeared in every single phase. Hell, she even appeared in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. To kill her off like this, I don't think is fair, right? Unless they. <laughs> Unless they avenge her in a good way. <laughs> you know what makes it more insulting, though? It's common knowledge from the first minute of the show that the scrolls are shapeshifters and she gets killed by a shapeshifter. Like, really? She's been the top agent, right? Mm. Even though S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't technically exist. Like, she's number one while Nick Fury's in space. And you really fell for that? Like, come on. Pierre, do you have any thoughts? I don't care. It's Pale Lloyd's podcast. <laughs> it's Maria Hill. She doesn't even have powers. Oh, you're, she used to be the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. She's such an important person. And now she's dead. Who's the next director? Who else do we have of the Maria Hill? Who's the next person? Quake was director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Stop thinking about who they're killing off and who's dead. Fuck them. They're gone. And we move on. <laughs> what are they bringing? And I think they're bringing Quake. You think they're bringing Quake. <laughs> You're thinking that. But I think that's what we should be thinking about and talking about. Quake is coming back. You heard it here first. So who do we have? We have Talos, his surprise child. He had kids in Captain yep. Marvel. So Captain Marvel, he had kids. I forgot because I forgot all about that movie. Cause as Pierre would say, don't care. So we literally have Talos, Nick Fury, Talos's child. Ross maybe comes back as actual Ross? I don't think so. Don Cheadle showed up. We got War Machine cameo. And we've got the first full appearance of a president. Which I also thought was an odd choice. The only thing I know him from is from a romantic comedy that I can't think of. Very romantic. Why do you think it was an odd choice? Isn't Thunderbolt Ross supposed to be president when it comes to a brave new world? Thunderbolt Ross doesn't become president until he started the Thunderbolts. I think it was stated that he's president in Captain America. I think this president dies. I think this president's this president a scroll. Is a scroll. God damn it. <laughs> there you go. The president's been dead and this is a scroll yeah. this whole time. That makes sense. I think you're going to see uh, yeah. either the president or you're going to see other people, maybe characters that we know. You know how they had the people in like containment little yeah. pod. I think we're going to see more people like we might see a cameo in one of those things. Like a quick one second, like Coulson. maybe at the end of this. Colson Could be Colson. And the whole time he never died, a scroll died. Bring back her boy. Kyle say no. Didn't he die twice? No, he died once. And then he came back in a TV show. And none of that matters. Everything that happened in that show doesn't really matter. Which is unfortunate. That show was not terrible. It wasn't great. But now it would be confusing if they bring Quake back. It would be very interesting if there were a quake back. But hold Set. on, let's take a step back real quick. Let's go back mm -hmm. to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I didn't mind the show, but Maria Hill appeared in both Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and a bunch of other movies. And she also made a comment in one of the episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that has now come full circle. Who or what is a man thing? 
and then we got man thing mm. so is agents of shield canon now no i didn't even get out of the starting gate before you shot that down. so if quake <laughs> comes does ghost rider come too i'm fine with getting robbie reyes eventually I think the 19999 universe does a Ghost Rider movie. It should be Danny Ketch. Technically, we got him already. Oh, no, he got Blaze. Yeah, we got Johnny Blaze. Are we going to talk about that Flash spoiler? I think I know <laughs> what you're talking about, and it has to do with the actor. It has right? to do with the actor, yes. Yep. Yeah, I know it. I don't care. Nick Cage fighting a spider as Superman in the Flash movie? Nick Cage was yeah. in a Tim Burton Superman movie that never got off the ground. He was right. cast as Superman. They go to that universe. He's Superman, and which is why he's appearing on the cover of a DC comic. Did you spoil Sorry. that for yourself or you saw it? Kevin Smith, he mentioned it in a panel. I'm glad that it's spoiled because really don't give that movie your money. It's so bad from what I hear. I ain't going to see it anytime soon. Yeah, I think it really was nostalgia bait. And yeah. that's what was pumping up the ratings before it got released. So yeah, 100% waiting and it's not getting a fucking episode out of us. Even though we <laughs> technically did a few already. Just speculating. Who was that other guy that they met? Like the scroll that came to the gate that was like, you know, looking. I don't think they said his name. He said his name. He said, my name Peter? is this. Peter. That's not Peter. Peter the Scroll. Something. It's Peter the Scroll. <laughs> Bob the Hydra agent and Peter the Scroll. I think the villain Garvik, I think that it's not Super Scroll. You don't think Garvik's Super Scroll? Nope. Do you think we're going to see the Super Scroll? Nope. Really? Nope. Not in this. That's funny that you don't think it's Super Scroll because in the comics, the Super Scroll's name is Garvik. No, so I don't think they're going to do it. What makes you think it's false? I just don't see with the technology they've shown us so far. It's like, okay, we're shape-shifting to an extent where we're also using a machine to take their memories now. So we're really good at being human. I don't think they're going to take another level to that and be like, now we're taking people's memories. And with those memories, we get their powers. From the trailers, it looked like they did go to the time travel room. Yeah, that's also a big so I'm wondering if, speculation. No, I mean, maybe they do time travel and maybe that's how they got scrolls everywhere. Or that's like the end goal is, hey, I'm going to time travel and now you're never going to be able to stop us because we're going to be everywhere. I mean, maybe, because I mean, obviously the whole dirty bomb thing was quickly, you know, exploded. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of a quick plot. There's definitely more. It's going to be a bigger mm -hmm. plot point to save the world. Which was pretty dark to see out of the show. Just blow up and see people like actually like tossed from this bomb. I was like, oh, what is it? TV 14, right? That's the radio. Yes. I know our last episode, you know, we're talking how we don't think a Punisher show is going to work out so well because it's not going to have the rating it needs. You know, it's not going to be as gruesome. I mean, they push the limits pretty decently with the TV 14 just for that scene alone. And they shot a few people with a few people bleed out. I mean, I think they might be able to pull off a Punisher with this rating. If they do a Punisher show, this is the really messed up part of my brain. I want it to be born. It takes place back in Vietnam. Frank ends yep, up yep. having to do something to a friend in order to survive. And so it would obviously it would be Iraq for John Berthold's Punisher. But to do born. You wouldn't have to get super violent. You could do it as a TV-14. The big moments would have it off screen and it'd be okay. Does he eat somebody? He eats somebody. I mean, there's <laughs> some weird Paramount show where they eat people and it's pretty graphic. Yeah. And I think it's the same rating. That'd be cool. Punisher eating some human people. I like it. Oh, that's a little crazy. I don't know. <laughs> but Pierre, you were saying that you think that character is somebody. Let's ask Jeremiah who famously has quoted different issue appearances several times this episode. Is there anyone in this show? I mean, I know it's the first episode, but anyone in particular that you know is out of the comics that we wouldn't have caught? Other than everyone that we saw, Garvik and Talos are both comic book characters. Gaia, I'm not 100% sure, but I think Gaia may be a character. I think Gaia is a character in Meet the Scrolls. I have it on my shelf behind me. Gaia is in the comics. Is she in Meet the Scrolls? She's the daughter of Talos and Sora. I didn't see anyone that made me think, oh, shit. All right. So the last thing that I kind of wanted to state, because I know we've talked about it here before. I think we now know when Fury stopped being Fury and when he started being a scroll. So the moment he came back from the blip, he was having some emotional struggles. And that's why he left. And that's when Talos became him. Stood in, yeah. So Spider-Man Far From Home would have been the first, which makes sense. I like how Sam is acting. Like Fury is acting not himself because mm -hmm. he's not the confident Nick Fury that he was in Winter Soldier. He has changed since the blip. 
for sure. Do you think that's like just more of a show? Like, oh yeah, I can't fight anymore. I'm just an old guy. I feel like he's not as sharp. Like that's really the best way to describe it. So you think that is like how he yeah, is? Yeah, I like think that's not... him. I mean, being on Saber, he's having a problem with Earth's gravity. That's what that was. I didn't catch on to that. Yeah. Do we think we'll get his son? That was 616's way of being like, haha, he looks like Nick Fury now. Battle scars. One through six, which was also the first appearance of Agent Coulson in the comics. Or are they going to introduce Patch? Wolverine? Wolverine. Someone else takes on the Patch. Yeah. Gravik's right hand scroll is Pagan. That checks. He okay. was the one running around being a douche. He's okay. one of the most important scrolls in the Secret Invasion plotline. Which apparently this show isn't. It adapts the name and the basic premise of scrolls running around, but it's not. Well, yeah, because you're missing superheroes. Yeah, you're missing Elektra. <laughs> you're missing Spider Woman. You're missing the Fantastic Four. <laughs> that's what, and that's what I'm saying too. We're not going to get Super Scroll because where are the powers coming from? And are they really going to push this? I'm now taking your mind with magical gems, along with shape shifting into. We're really going to get powers out of that machine too. Powers from whom? So Pagan was killed while posing as Elektra. So it's funny that you brought up Elektra. Mm-hmm. So that was the main person that he was. That's like a yeah. famous panel, right? Yeah, I think literally Tony Stark is standing over top of like, oh, shit. Oh, so there's also a scroll named Kriega. It's a blink and miss it cameo. And you only know her name because of the credits. But it's Mm. important because in the comics, she is a super scroll variant from Marvel's Mm. manga verse. Oh, that's super out there. Thanks for sharing it. I don't like it. (laughs) I'll try and find a picture of her for clipping purposes. I don't know if I can. So they might just be plucking names because there's (laughs) also a Zerksu. And in the comics, he's a scroll soldier who acted as a D-list hero, 3D man's primary antagonist. And on the show, he drives a car. Yeah, they're probably just pulling names. Yeah. What about Olivia Coleman, the Sonia Falsworth? I don't know her. There is another Falsworth in the MCU. And it's James Montgomery Falsworth, and he was in Captain America, the first Avenger. For reference, it was this guy. So right he was one of the people it. that was liberated by Captain America. So he was Union Jack. We'll see where it goes. Right now, a 7 out of 10. I'm ranking it the lowest of all the Disney Plus shows at the moment. This episode felt like a filler. Did not feel like a pilot. Did not give me enough meat. There was too much tendon. Just like this Palace podcast episode. Pierre, it is your time to shine. Oh, yeah. This is the main course, actually. So I'm glad that you guys stuck around for this. Fury of the Gods, a Shazam movie. The second movie in our Shazam universe. It was really long really long way too long it was i think three hours long and at one no point way. we paused it we thought it was like close to the end and we pause it and there's still an hour and 50 minutes left we're <laughs> like what the fuck like what have we watched this whole time because it was a whole plot and it felt like it was getting to that point you know where it's like oh dramatic finish and you know they fight the villain and it got there and then there was a whole nother plot so I was like, oh, great. The actual runtime is two hours and 10 minutes, but go on. Too long. 40 minutes in, I guess, and it was terrible. It makes it shorter than the original Shazam movie. Okay. Well, <laughs> it was a lot worse than the original. It wasn't worth watching at all. Was it better or worse than Thor Love and Thunder? Definitely worse. Now, what I will say is that The Rock killed the Shazam movies hmm. single-handedly. I think he killed them. So I don't have to waste two hours of my life. Does Mr. Mind show up? The little caterpillar? Yes. <laughs> yes, he does show up. He shows Fuck. up at the very end. He comes in, he's like, I'm putting together a team. And he like comes in, he talks to like the original villain from the first movie. Like he like finds him in jail. He's like, oh, my plan is coming to fruition. He's like, what took you so long? He's like, I'm just a caterpillar. <laughs> just wiggle around slowly. <laughs> like He's like, all right, well, now that you're here, like, what are we doing? He's like, I have one more thing before my plan can come through and he's like no what like come back and he's you just see him like wiggle away slowly so that scene was actually the best scene out of the whole movie but it's sad because it's not going anywhere can i give my history of comics lesson really quick that has to do with mr mind (laughs) everyone loves the comic book crossover you having to buy multiple issues to get the same story it's because of that caterpillar in the 1940s there was a run of issues 32 issues total running from Wiz comics captain marvel and captain marvel jr called the monster society of evil where the main bad guy was mr mind and that's where the comic book crossover started and it's been draining all wallets ever since thanks to a crazy 
space caterpillar. Yeah, that was probably the best cameo and I think best part of the whole movie. But yeah, overall, again, back to my point, I think The Rock killed the whole where it could have gone, mm. being that he didn't want to be the main villain of the first one. Yeah. That would have been a much better movie in itself, just to rock against Shazam. But instead, they gave Mm -hmm. him his own movie, and he'll never be remembered because we're going to probably have a new Shazam at some point. And a new, he might actually still come back as Shazam. I don't think we'd get the same Black Adam. I don't think Zach Levy should be Shazam again. I don't want either one of them back, but if either one would come back... I think I'd rather have Shazam back. The kid, just let him grow up a little bit and he could just play both. True, yeah. You're right. So what rating did we give it? Oh, what did I give the Craven potential? Five? I give yeah. this a four. <laughs> no, it was better than Morbius. This is a six. Yeah. Here's rating scale is just wild ride. <laughs> it's a little high. I don't know. I think, <laughs> I all think right, you should five. have like give a half five. system. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. You should do a 0.5 eventually. <laughs> I'm like CGC. I got <laughs> points in there. So 9.8. <laughs> the movie was so bad to you that it felt like it was seven hours of your life with the halfway point. A yeah. six out of ten. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. You're right. Okay. The thing about Morbius, it was quick. It was like ripping <laughs> off a Band-Aid and it just hurt. It just hurt a little bit. Little sting and you just move on. This is just like, yo. Like, why? Like, just take the fucking Band-Aid off. Like, you're just ripping every hair. Every hair follicle is just coming off, like, slowly. <laughs> I was, and then it got stuck. They were just tugging. That is yeah. the official Fury of the Gods review by Pierre <laughs> Alloy's podcast. Goddamn. Have scrolls always been immune to radioactive materials? Scrolls have always been immune to radioactive materials that is a fact just like mutants are immune to aids i didn't need you to share that it's true though <laughs> I mutants can't you. get aids wow okay